In this video, we're going to explore a new Selenium feature called Mutual Authentication. It's a feature that came in with Selenium 114, and it's a very easy way to enforce mutual authentication between workloads. MTLS-based mutual authentication. So what is MTLS? MTLS is Mutual Transport Layer Security, and that's uh, essentially a mechanism that ensures the authenticity, integrity, and confidentiality of data exchange between two entities uh, within the network. And that's in traditional TLS, single TLS, you have a client that verifies the identity of the server. Uh, but in mutual TLS, it, the server will also verify the identity of the client. So typically when people talk about MTLS, they want this kind of authentication, mutual authentication between two workloads, and they also want the data between these two workloads to be encrypted. With Cilium, we achieve this uh, requirement by using two different features, uh, the mutual authentication that we're going to explore in this video, and also the transparent encryption feature, which has been available with Cilium for uh, a couple of years now, where we can encrypt the traffic in transit uh, between between pods, between nodes, uh, using either IPsec or WireGuard. Now, again, here we're going to look at mutual authentication and how easy it is to apply mutual authentication using Selenium. And we'll be using one of our new labs to walk through how it works. And I start with uh, install the installation, the configuration, and then how we can visualize the mutual authentication. And in a uh, second video, we look at how it works under the hood and how we use a spiffy uh, identity management framework to um, manage the identities created as part of the mutual authentication process. So let's get started with the lab. So, the slab has been inspired by Star Wars, so I hope you're familiar with some of the references I'm going to be using, but really the idea is to uh, think about like some of the scenarios in Star Wars where you have the Empire that is, you know, builds a Death Star, and they have the Rebels, we are typically the good guys, and they're trying to destroy the Death Star, right? And one of the things the Rebels try to do is to maybe, you know, access a TIE fighter, which is an um, Empire ship that will then access the Death Star and you know, even possibly destroy it. So what we, we are, uh, the scenario we've got in our video is, uh, imagine you've got network policies, right? Cilium network policies that you know, prevent uh, layer seven or limit layer seven communications between your, your environment. But that's again assuming that the workloads are who they say they are, right? And what we'll see is what happens when we don't have mutual authentication, what could happen? And we'll see what the, the benefits that mutual authentication can, uh, can provide uh, within a kind of cloud native environment. So, um, Again, what uh, we recommend you know, when you when you do a uh, do the lab is are you make sure you familiarize familiarize yourself with network policies. We'll have a quick review uh, in this video, but um, essentially to enforce mutual authentication with Selenium, we'll just add a couple of lines of code to your network policy, and that will enforce uh, mutual authentication between the workloads to which this network policy applies. To. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, what we've done uh, in the background is we've uh, deployed uh, an environment with a you know, Kubernetes cluster with Selenium, and we've added a couple of flags. We just literally just enable mutual authentication, and we've also uh, enabled the deployment of a Spire server. And Spire is a production ready implementation of the Spiffy framework. And Spiffy is, a, again, that's a, a management of identity framework. And that's how we're going to be essentially creating the certificates uh, between each workload that will essentially provide that identity. So let's first have a look 
and just verify that Sigma must be deployed, it's healthy, and uh, what's, we can verify we set status at uh, Sigma is okay. We've got uh, uh, a three node cluster and uh, Cilium is, is healthy as you can see and uh, mutual authentication has been enabled. And um, and again, we've got uh, a Spire server that has been deployed as part of this environment. And that's going to provide that um, um, identity management for us. Now, you don't actually have to be familiar with Spiffy or Spire to be able to use Cilium uh, mutual authentication. But again, we'll explore this in a subsequent video. So great, um, we've got um, Cilium up and running. We've got mutual authentication enabled. I'm just uh, enabling the debug function here, and that's for that's going to be useful later to let us visualize some of the logs uh, when we enable mutual authentication and when we have workloads communicating with each other. Cool. So so far so good. Um, We'll, um, you know, we've deployed mutual authentication globally, but so far it won't be enforced until we've deployed a network policy with mutual authentication, which we're going to do in a, in a couple of uh, tasks. But first, let's deploy the, uh, a demo application. Um, and it's a depo demo application that you can, you may have seen in some of the demos by Thomas Graf or Liz Rice, and that you will have seen in the Getting Started uh, with Selium Guides. Uh, again, I recommend you familiarize yourself with it, but essentially you get an X-Wing, you've got a TIE fighter, and they're both trying to access the Death Star. The X-Wing should not be able to access the Death Star, but the TIE fighter should be allowed to. Right? So let's go ahead and deploy this environment. We're you know, creating some pods, called the Death Star pods. We're creating a TIE fighter pod, and we're creating an X-Wing pod. So in this, what we've got is we're in a network policy, which is a, um, a layer three, layer four network policy, where um, what we're saying is what we're um, only allowing is traffic from um, endpoints with the labels or empire. So again, essentially the empire ships, and they're only able to access the Death Star, right? So only the endpoint that only applies to uh, endpoints with these labels, right? The class Death Star or Empire over HTTP, right? And we're just going to verify that this network policy has been enforced. So we are just going to check that, uh, yeah, if we run um, a curl over HTTP, so TCP port 80, uh, from the TIE fighter to the Death Star, access is working, right? So ship has landed, right? We get access because the, let, the network policy allows the TIE fighter, which um, we just show the labels here. You can see that the TIE fighter uh, has the Org Empire label and therefore is able to access the Death Star. Now, if we run the same command from the X-Wing, and, and the X-Wing has not got that uh, that label, only has the Alliance um, uh, label. So if we run the same command from the X-Wing, it's going to time out, again, because the network policy blocks the traffic. Cool. Now, again, this, you know, it, it works fine, right? We've got kind of layer three, layer four network policies. The, uh, the TIE fighter is able to access the Death Star, but the X-Wing is not uh, able to. But again, that assumes that the TIE fighter is piloted by a trusted pilot, right, from the Empire. But what if, what if TIE fighter is compromised? What if the rebels take over uh, the TIE fighter and boom, destroy, uh, destroy the Death Star. Now, that's really why you need mutual authentication. That's really why you need to verify the identity of the client as a server. 
So uh, what we've uh, what we've done here is uh, you can actually run this command whereby the tie fighter could cause um, you know could have control the um, taken control of a tie for tie fighters rebels would have taken control of the tie fighter and caused the Death Star to explode. So, you know, what we uh, want to do is, uh, see the, the Emperor is pretty annoyed, right? So we need to, uh, you know, and they, they're going to build a brand new Death Star now. They really want to lock down the security uh, for the Empire. So we're going to go and we're going to add module authentication. And what we, you know, the beauty of mutual authentication with Selium is that you literally just need to add a couple of lines to your network policies to enforce it. So let's have a look at this one. You just have to add authentication mode, mode required to in egress or in ingress to your mutual authentication. So let's have a quick look. We're going to apply this network policy and it's going to do a couple of things. And we're going to use a, a kubectl diff to show the difference between uh, the existing network policy that is being applied and the one we're going to apply shortly. So this time we're going to apply some layer seven rules, which again is a you know benefit of using CDM network policies. You can uh, filter traffic at not just a layer three, layer four, but also a layer seven. Right. So we're going to prevent the um, any users, right, from uh, accessing any other uh, API apart from the request landing. As you saw earlier, when you make an API call to this specific uh, path, it just causes a, you know, a explosion of the desktop. So we need to not only prevent uh, Enforce with authentication, but we also need to limit um, the type of traffic at the layer seven layer. So what we are also adding here is this authentication mode require that will ensure that um, the Death Star checks the identity of um, you know the uh, the ship that is trying to connect to it, and and vice versa. So let's go ahead and get started and applying this um, policy. And we're going to just making sure that connectivity is still working. So again, the, um, the TIE fighter is able to access the request landing uh, API. The X-Wing cannot access it again because it has not got the right labels. And finally, um, we will, if we look at uh, this one here, uh, if we try to access, access the exhaust port API, again, the access is denied, and this is because uh, we are only allowing the request landing path. Okay, so you know, this is a kind of benefit of using the layer seven network policy. So all this is great, but how do we check that there was mutual authentication that happened in the background? And so we'll, we'll have a look in the next task. So again, you can do this labs, uh, you know, in your own time and at your own convenience. I'm just kind of walking you through uh, but again, if we uh, look back in the scenario, we get the uh, we, we've told the emperor, look, we've we've secured the desk down now. Uh, but the, you know, the emperor is like needs to be convinced. He wants us to show him that uh, uh, the traffic has been encrypted, and he wants some observability, right? He wants some visibility into into the mutual authentication process. So the network observability tool that comes with Cilium is called Hubble. And it's kind of TCP dump for Kubernetes or if maybe NetFlow for Kubernetes if you're more uh, of a network engineer. So it just gives you the visibility to network traffic between your different pods. So let's just verify that we are running the right version of Hubble. We're running version 
uh, the order 12, which uh, is uh, supports mutual authentication. So let's have a, again, we're going to run the same connectivity checks and we're going to use Hubble Observe to look for traffic that has been dropped from a specific pod, which is in our case, the X-Wing. Now we can see that a policy has been traffic ha from the X-Wing that has been dropped, right, by the um, by this policy. And that's not surprising. Again, we've got, uh, we know that uh, our, with our network policy, we can stop traffic from the X-Wing from accessing the Death Star. Okay, fine. Um, now let's have a look at traffic from uh, TIE Fighter to um, the, uh, to the to the Death Star. And you can see that a couple of packets were dropped, right? So the traffic that was dropped is because you can see authentication required, right? And the reason it was dropped is because with Cilium Mutual Authentication, what happens is the first packet that will to match that kind of mutual authentication enabled policy will kickstart the mutual hand authentication handshake between the, the two workloads, right? That's why the first packet is dropped. Uh, but then when we look at traffic uh, um, later on, the traffic has been allowed. So again, if we look using, using Hubble, uh, what we can see here is that the traffic from um, the TIE fighter to the Death Star has been allowed using uh, using Spire-based authentication, right? So it just show you, shows us that the mutual authentication happened and was enabled and that traffic has been enabled. But as you can see, the first packet that hits that mutual authentication based network policy will trigger the handshake. And once that once the identity between two workloads has been verified, traffic will be allowed between the two pods. Um, and that's really a way for us to um, uh, verify that um, we with um, enforce mutual authentication. So. Again, to recap, right? So the first one was allowed because, uh, you know, it was the TIE fighter was able to access the Death Star. That was at the beginning of the video before I enabled mutual authentication. Next, you have a denied here. And that was the first packet that triggers the mutual authentication, uh, triggers the handshake, and where we verify the identity in the background. And finally, allowed. Uh, is when authentication has, has, has happened between two workloads and traffic and outflow, right? So again, to recap, um, before we look at, you know, the actual um, spiffy Inspire environment um, in a different video, to recap, it just took two lines of code in your network policies to enforce mutual authentication between two workloads, right? That's all you need. Enable it globally, uh, enable mutual authentication globally, enable mutual authentication in your network policies, and then your workloads will be able to um, verify each other's identity before they can start communicating. Okay, and that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.